Okay. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, <clears throat> There have been a few changes, it looks like, um, I'm learning on the fly here, uh, to our program, uh, and that's, that'll be just fine, I think. Um, I'm Andy Reed. I'm an associate professor of church history here at BYU. I teach in religious education, um, and I also chair the BYU Interfaith uh, Engagement Council, uh, and it's partly in that role that I think I'm here. Um, Ingrid Rosendorf Joyce is not here um, for this panel, uh, and Abdir Is Ismail um, has just presented in the panel before this on the academic uh, setting, and so we're going to give him a bit of a break. But we will likely invite him to respond um, at the end of uh, our presentation. Uh, our first presenter today will be Gershon Kwasniewski, uh, Rabbi uh, for the World Union for Progressive Judaism. Uh, and he has a, a very impressive um, bio. I'll just give you a few small bits. You can read the larger um, biography in the program. Uh, <clears throat> Harvey Kosniewski is a prominent figure in the realm of progressive Judaism and interfaith dialogue in Latin America. In 2023, he became Latin America's geographic representative to the executive board of the World Union for Progressive Judaism, um, as well as the vice president of the Council of Reform Brazilian Rabbis. Uh, he's worked tirelessly to foster interfaith understanding and collaboration. <clears throat> we are indeed grateful to have his presentation today. He will be presenting in Portuguese, and so I encourage you to use uh, your uh, headphones if needed um, for those who uh, will need assistance with that. Yes? Okay, so Ingrid will be participating in the plenary session that is right after lunch, just so everybody, you will get a chance to hear from Ingrid, okay? Um, please join me in welcoming Rabbi Krasniewski. Thank you very much for the introduction, and thank you very much for the church for the kind invitation, especially I appreciate that Kevin Kimball, my dear friend, is attending this section. I know that you have uh, some health problems, but you are here and you're strong. I am praying for your health. Um, when I was invited, I didn't know the language that uh, I go in to speak, but there are many, many people who speak, who are uh, Portuguese uh, speakers. Then I will speak in my own language, the language of my country. But uh, if you have any difficulty, please ask me in English. Un enorme prazer de estar aquí, un enorme honra de estar representando a comunidade judaica neste evento tão importante da Igreja. Eu estou re realmente encantado e impactado pelo acolhimento, pela hospitalidade e por poder sentir-me em casa. Eu estou muito grato por poder também conhecer muitas pessoas do meu país, do Brasil, pessoas que trabalham na Câmara de Senadores, de Diputados a nível federal, pessoas que marcam a história do meu país e poder encontrar aqui parceiros para construir uma sociedade melhor. Eu gosto de falar em tópicos, eu organizo as minhas, as minhas palestras em tópicos e, portanto, eu gostaria de compartilhar esses tópicos desde uma perspectiva também histórica. Pertence um povo que, desde a saída de Egito, há mais de 2.500 anos, it's okay? It's not translation. Okay. Let me wait a little bit. Okay. Hello, hello, one, two, three. Hello, hola. 
<laughs> Translation is not working, my friends. Who are in the fourth floor? Room 208 without English translation, please. Hello, 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 hello. Okay. Houston, we have a problem. Houston. <laughs> okay, let me continue in English and then when uh, translation will work, I will back to Portuguese. Just uh, for not uh, miss the time, okay? Um, is it working or not? Not yet? Okay, someone will translate to Portuguese. <laughs> I belong to a people that for more than 2,500 years are fighting for freedom. When God sent Moses to Egypt, he sent with a special mission. He sent to rescue our people from the time of slavers. Our people were slavers in Egypt. And from this time, 2,500 years ago, we are fighting not just for our freedom, we are fighting for the faith, for the freedom for the entire humanity. And how important it's freedom for us that the holiday of Passover, that it's one of the main holidays in the Jewish calendar, one of the name of Passover is the time of freedom. And how important is for the Bible this holiday that in the Jewish calendar through the Bible, the month of Nisan is the first month of the year. Freedom is so important that we remember every Shabbat, every Sabbath, during the blessing, during the wine blessing, we bless for the creation of the world, but we bless every Sabbath for our freedom. We remember that we were slavers in Egypt. Also, in freedom times, the memory, we need to feel ourselves that we were slavers in Egypt. This is what we are teaching to our families, to our kids during the Passover celebration. And the memory, it's so important to build this religious freedom. Because we know in our own bodies that this time it's terrible. And there are many, many peoples that continue to face for freedom in our days in the 21st century. We are talking about the story about 2,500 years ago, but nowadays there are many peoples who continue to faith for freedom. And we need to be partners of them, also if they are not from our own religion. This is an issue for the entire humanity. We are brothers, we are sisters. It's very important what we studied for our rabbis. God, when created humanity, he created just one man and one woman. He can create many men and many women, but he decided just to create one man and one woman. Why? Because nobody of us can say that my father or my mother are more important than your father and your mother. This is the reason that we have a common family, and we need to understand that we are coming from the same family. Religions are coming later, but when we are studying about the humanity, we are studying about the same way, 
the same start. And we need to see the world as our common house. Dear friends, there are many, many questions. How my people survive for many, many centuries? What is the secret of the Jewish people who survive for many, many centuries? We survive many empires. We survive the history. We survive the Holocaust. Why we survive? And why we survive in Egypt? We survive because we keep our tradition. We keep our holidays. We keep our Jewish names. We keep our celebrations. And this is the reason that we continue in the history. Because we keep our tradition, we keep and we are very proud about our story. Also, if the story is not so good and so happy to tell, we are sitting around the table during many holidays to speak about the sad days of our own story. You know that one of the issues of this session is to talk about interface and intercouncil. It's very important to dialogue. It's very important to speak to the others. We start the dialogue around a table. We, we start the dialogue around a plate of food. We start the dialogue when we visiting each other. And we start the dialogue with the words. In one occasion, a famous rabbi challenged his students. And he asked, please, he, he, he called a little student. And he said, go to the market and buy the best that you find in the market. And uh, he asked to other student, go to the same market and buy the worst that you find in this place. Both students return to the study room with the same, with the tongue. With the tongue, you can say the best words, or with the tongue, you can say the worst words. What we are speaking can construct or can destroy. Once that the word is going out of our mouths, we don't have the right to this word comes back. We don't know who will listen, who will hear, who will reproduce this word. And we must be very careful about, about what we are speaking. I participate in many groups of interface. And why? Because the interface groups are a way to fight against intolerance. This is the word that I really don't like, intolerance. I prefer to change this word for respect. I'm not going to fight a game, to fight a game intolerance. I would like to construct respect between us. Respect is the admission that you can have the right to exist. This is very simple to say, but in this place, not just in this place, in this room, we are talking about 65 countries who are representative here in this place. Many of the countries of the people who are here don't respect the existence of my people. But we are here together. Many of the countries that are here perhaps don't have public relations or political relations. But we are here together. 
The problems within, between us sometimes are not religious problems, are political problems. For many of our countries, we can go from here to there, and especially from Israel to some countries. And I wish that we can work together. If we can sit here together, if we can share four or five days together, building dialogue, building relationship, building friendship, I'm sure that the countries that we represent also can build this friendship. The Middle East is changing, and I'm so glad for this. And uh, we need partners for this change. Every one of you is a partner. I'm very proud to come for a country who respect the religious freedom. I'm very proud to come from Brazil, a country where we can build together respect between religions. I'm participating in many, many religious groups. For example, I participate in a group that calls Conselio Católico Judaico da CNBB. This is a, a council between Catholics and Jews that depends from the bishop. Other groups that just start this year, Convir RS, it's um, a group created by the Secretary, Secretary of Human Rights for um, my state, Rio Grande do Sul. You see, now, now, this year, something new, never ever before we had a group that can share religious freedom in my state, 2023. I participate also as a national representative of interface for the Jewish Confederation and one of the voices for interface for the Jewish Confederations. And why it's so important to participate and other groups, uh, Religion for Peace, Latin America, um, and I'm the coordinator of the Interface Dialogue Group from Porto Alegre. This is our last project. We built a monument to show to the population how important is the respect between the religions. Two hands in the position of prayer with the symbols of many religions and with the word peace written in the different languages. This is in a public park in front of the river that we inaugurated just last November. We have an enormous responsibility to develop respect between our religions. We need to understand that sometimes there, there are some tricks and we need to be very smart. We need to know who really wants the dialogue, who really wants to respect each other. It's a, it's a famous verse in the Holy Bible, in the Leviticus text, that where it's written, we need to love each other as a brother. But we need to practice the love between our brothers. It's not something theoretical. We need to help. We, as a religious, are in a field. Perhaps our dearest politicians are not so close to the people. During the political campaigns, you are in the field. But after this, after that, you are going back to the parliament. And we, as a religious, continue in the field. I'm thinking that we need to develop our relationship. I'm sure that the religious freedom, it's not just the responsibility of the religious leaders. It's the responsibility of all the people who have authority in a country. 
and we need to be very, very, um, we need to be together to build this relationship. Let me tell you that all our holy books are talking about respect, are talking about freedom, are talking about the sensibility that we need to have from each other. Life if, is the most important value that we have as human beings. You know that religious freedom is part of the rights, of the human rights that we are talking about. It's not a possibility that we can give to another person. It's a right. You are born with this right. And we need to develop that this right is part of your life. You, we don't need to fight for this right. This must be natural in all our societies. This will be natural in all our countries. We need to develop the respect, but we need to be and to develop the trust between us. And uh, during the pandemic, it was difficult to sit in front of each other. We thought, many of us, that the pandemic is going to change the world. And the world after, before and after the pandemic continued to be the same. We need to do our part. And uh, our part is to develop our commandments. We are coming from different religions. We have different commandments. But all our commandments are saying the same in a different way. When I am talking about water, the water will be the form of the place that I put it. The water inside this bottle have this form. If I put the same water in a glass, will be another form, but still continue to be water. Respect between us, commandments may be different in our own religions, but all the religions like the same. The peace, the integrity, the freedom of the individuals, but also the freedom of our communities. Let's build together and let's work together to develop a better world. It's not theoretical, it's practice. We need to go to the field together. We need to show the people and we need to show to our communities that we can live in peace also if we have different religions. The first time that I invited a bishop to the synagogue, not everybody liked it. The last time that I invited the bishop, the Catholic bishop, to my community, everybody embraced him. Our Passover meal once was inside the Catholic cathedral. Everybody liked to attend this service, this meal, the Passover meal. We need to dream, but we need to do what we are dreaming. And uh, the challenge is to show to the others that we can go together. For example, you know that soccer is very popular in Brazil. With many religious leaders, we are going to the stadium to walk together before the match to show that we are part of the same, to show that we can walk together or we can sit together and we can spend a time together also if we are so different. Don't hesitate and show to the others and open the doors like the church here in Provo is doing, that we are open doors to receive who is different of us, to receive who believe different of us. But we need to 
give the possibility to open the door because if you are not showing who you are, why you like that he will respect you. We need to go and to visit the different church, the different temples, the different institutions to study from the others. I have the great privilege to study more about you, about the, my brothers and sister Mormons. I uh, will go back home very rich of knowledge, but very rich to have a new friends, to know better about your tradition, to know better how you, ca how you take care for the others. And I study a lot to reproduce in my community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rabbi. That was wonderful. Um, we, I believe we have some microphones in the back. Is this true? I think they're negotiating right now. Um, we do have a little bit of time for Q&A, um, and because we have uh, presenters here who have been pulled apart to, to present in other places, I don't want to exhaust them um, for those who have presented or those who will present, but I thought this might be a great opportunity. We have about 15 minutes uh, for some question and answer. If you're okay to answer questions? Of course. All right. Um, maybe I'll start with the first one, and then for those who have a question, there are microphones that we will get to you um, so that everybody can hear the question. Um, Rabbi, my, my, my question um, is thinking about the kind of broader context of what you're, you're asking of us here. Um, you've, you've suggested that we need to have opportunities to practice love um, and find uh, uh, maybe spaces where that love can be practiced. Yeah. Um, and as, as you, you were speaking, you know, I, for many of us, the very framework by which we understand uh, really difficult topics such as genocide comes from our understanding of Jewish history. Um, and many of the interfaith work and the interreligious councils that exist today exist because of that difficult history. And so maybe a question for you is, how, do we, how can interreligious councils and interfaith councils um, and institutions develop spaces uh, for us to practice that love? And have you seen an example that, might, that you might suggest to us as a, as a kind of good working model? Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you for the question. You saw, I, I, I spoke about an uh, interface group in my state by law for the first time this year. This is something new in history. Many people are talking about interface, but the same people don't practice the interface. The interface is not uh, to take a photo with the bishop. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> I take photo, and I say I, I, I put this in in, uh, in the, the social media, and I say I practice interface. No, for example, we we need to be open to invite the people to sit in our places, and especially the people who don't agree with your existence. Mm, how can be that in the 21st century, some some person can say that you don't have the right to exist? It's very difficult. Then you must be friend for your enemy. <laughs> your enemy must become a friend. And when you start to talk with him, you can see that it's a person like you, who have a family like you, who have a dreams like you, who fight for freedom like you. Uh, and we need to open our table, our place must be very, very small with so many new friends. And uh, um, we need to invite everybody, also who don't think like us. This is a challenge. Not to, it's very easy to invite friends, people who are thinking like you. It's very easy. The, the challenge is, is to invite people who are thinking different of you. Uh, I have some words that I 
always like to repeat in every place that I'm going. We need to global, globalize the love. We need to globalize the love. People hate in many places each other, but we need to globalize love. We are talking about the globalization time. Okay, we need to globalize love. Let's start to do this. Yes. Yes. Thank you. And I saw you this morning eating at the breakfast table. <laughs> I wanted to speak to you. Now, this is not a question, but this is something that I would like to stress to everyone. In our country, President Gloria Arroyo, one of our past presidents, signed into law. We're talking about like, the gentleman here was asking, what, what do we do to implement our president signed into law a law that requires all government offices in the Philippines to observe interfaith activities for one week during the first week of February. This is in line, a uh, rabbi, in line with the United Nations uh, observance of interfaith month that in our country is interfaith week. When I was in the court, when I was an active justice of the peace, as you know, I am retired. But though retired, I'm not tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not tired of being used by God. Meaning, uh, I would like to be an instrument. And I would, and I, when I was in the court, I would establish uh, an interfaith mass Yes. Muslim, uh, a Muslim priest. And then we have, uh, you know, in the Philippines we have so many Protestant congregations. So we invited several, somebody, one came, and then we have a Catholic priest. And you know what they did? They celebrated Mass, con celebrated Mass, the three of them. And each of them speak, uh, they gave a homily. It's what a beautiful sight seeing the three of them speaking before employees of the highest court of the land. Now that is an example, uh, Rabbi, of an actual activity that we could, that we could uh, implement here and anywhere else, uh, Rabbi. So this is just a short sharing. You can talk to the mayor, meaning the local officials, and tell them why can't you in, you know, why can't we have an interfaith activity in the locality? You can start with that. Uh, Let me tell you that in, in that place, in this park, uh, next month will be an interfaith day. We will be open for the entire society for Porto Alegre and uh, we will spend an entire day with music, with concert. Uh, we, we are talking about the fraternity and we will sing and we will share meals. Meals is something that always works. Um, let me tell you, I'm, I'm part also from Ashoka Portugal. Ashoka is another important organization worldwide. And, uh, we need to discover that each one of us is a peacemaker and is a change maker. This is very important. Each one of you have the possibility to change the others of your surrounded. We are 
a potential change maker and peacemaker, and we need to develop this. Uh, and I'm sure that each one of you have this capacity. Just, just you know to discover this capacity. Other thing that I would like to say in all these years that I'm a sharing interface, that we need to sit down to study about interface. What, is, what does it mean? It's not just coming for an informal meeting. We need to sit down and we need to uh, study about the holy books of the other religions. We need to go to the temples to understand the tradition and the practice. This is the, the unique way to understand the other. Uh, I can understand the other just in an informal meeting once a year or twice a year, okay? Our interface dialogue group for Porto Alegre have a meeting once a month for the last 27 years. And I, I'm very proud of this. And each time we are going to the other temple to know more about the practice. Uh, two weeks ago, it was the, uh, new, the Jewish New Year. And I invite represents for many religions to come and to attend the service. And I invite the bishop of the city, and I invite consuls, uh, the American consul and the German consul. Uh, we need to open doors for our communities to show who we are. Uh, Rabbi, just one last thing. Um, just to you know, share to everyone that we can do something as an interfaith uh, councils in our country. Uh, Rabbi, in the Philippine National Police, in the Philippines, we form an advisory council. And I almost became the chair of the council, but I declined. And so I nominated a woman uh, who is a, uh, an officer of one of the Protestant groups, and the vice chair is an imam, and I became a member. And this is what we do, Rabbi. The Knights of Columbus, to which I belong, it is an organization, a Catholic organization. We came out with a, a, a catechetical book, and we use this to teach the policemen. We evangelize instead of the policemen coming over to this place, for example, because they could not come. So we reach out to them. We evangelize. We bring Christ to them. And this would include imams and Protestants, uh, ministers, we go together and we go and visit the different police stations. You say, what a wonderful sight when you have two or three uh, priests or imams reaching out to our policemen. And the primary intention, my brothers, my brethren, is to cut corruption. Or at least, uh, you know, especially among policemen, the temptation is so great. And by reaching out to them, bringing Christ to them, to the stations, through interfaith activities, then at least there is a future that we can reform and transform our policemen. Thank let, you so much, Radha. Let me tell you that we, we used to, to visit uh, school, universities, private and, and uh, public school. Uh, and uh, for example, we chose one issue and we talk about this subject for, for students. It's very important to go to schools, to, uh, to go and to show who you are and to, to talk about who you are. First of all, you need to know who you are. This is a challenge for us. Yes, if I need to, to show and, and to talk about Judaism, first of all, I need to know who I am. I need to practice my Judaism, and then I can go and share my values. Um, and this is very important. Not, not just people who talk about religion, uh, people who live the religion and practice the religion. We have time for one more question. Professor, you had a hand oh. behind you here. No, no, but I, I, I can pass through it to other. Go ahead. Thank you for sharing, Rabbi. I was listening to your talk, and I know you mentioned some countries don't acknowledge your country, and one of them is my country. 
my passport says I'm banned entering Israel only. Earlier, there was North, Af North Korea, Russia, South Africa and all that. But my country is progressingly to allow groups of people to visit Israel. My wife have, and I have been to Israel. And your country is smart by not stamping our passports. They give you a cheat for all countries, I believe. And that's very, very smart. So uh, we pray and hope that countries like ours will accept and acknowledge your people one day too. Thank you. Let me, let me just remember that my country, my country is Brazil. But uh, I know about the story, about the, the stamp on the, uh, the passport. Great. Well, we want to have one more question. Do you want to? No? no. Sure? <laughs> OK. One last question here. Thank you. A comment, OK. Thank you so very much, uh, Rabbi, for the presentation. I just want to pick two things. One, terminologies that we use. Sometimes when you say tolerance, it is true. We have to redefine some of these terminologies what, that we use. For example, if I told my brother here, I'm just tolerating you. <laughs> you know, what does that mean? If you told your wife at home, I'm just tolerating you. <laughs> You know, it is very scaring. It is not positive. You know, it is very negative, actually, in a way. And so therefore, we need to be very careful with the terminologies that we use as we extend our, our hands to, uh, to the interfaith engagements. The other bit is um, 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 on the issue of learning from each other. I'm truly grateful and honored that I didn't miss this uh, symposium. I almost missed it narrowly, but I'm happy that I came. Back in our country, we had a challenge of understanding who are this Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter Saints. And as a chair, the ED will bear with me that many people came to me to ask, who are these people whom you are welcoming to our house? Do you know them? So I feel so humbled that I came because I have the answer. And I'm happy that I have learned a lot. And thank you so very much for the great work. And what we have learned, just as uh, uh, Rabbi has said, I am learning and I'm humbled to be here and to have joined you. Thank you. Great. We want to thank uh, Rabbi Kwasniewski for his great um, insights and his work, uh, as well as for all of you for being here. Um, I think just the uh, very idea that we've, some of the comments and, and uh, um, questions have expressed, there's a significant work to be done uh, among people of faith um, and people of no faith. And I think that's a significant uh, space for us to begin working. So we want to thank you again, Rabbi, for your great work. Thank and you. thank you for being here. Thank you.